Hi. Apologizing is something that a lot of times people have a hard time doing with their friends or relationships, and I think that for additional reasons that might be hard for an uh, Asperger person as well. But I wanted to go over something that someone wrote me a little bit, um, and just try to follow up on some answers and some advice and some guidance on some things. Okay. Um, it's about somebody's spouse. The problem is that every couple of months he derails things and starts really offending me either directly or my negligence. The thing is is that people don't always mean to do something bad in relationships in the first place. Okay, and I think especially with Asperger's too. It's people don't mean to be offensive necessarily. And I need to relate with my own story a little bit. I know that for myself in apologizing it did not come easy and I grew up with two parents that butt heads a lot and did a lot of blame shifting and making excuses um, I didn't I didn't realize how bad this was for relationships until I was older and got in one myself and I usually apologize because mom made me or my mom usually would apologize to me if I would make her it doesn't really count quite as much even when I'd be really, really hurt by something she would do, I'd still have to make her. It, it didn't really come naturally, I think, for my family. I think that, you know, we were a, a proud Christian family, and I know my dad was from Texas or something. And anyway, it, I didn't know how bad that was until I was in a relationship myself. You know, it's very necessary to cement a relationship with apologizing. And it's very, it's very necessary to admit when we've done wrong. I mean, just as a, as a person and as a relationship, it's, it's how people can move forward, it's how people can be better and, and acknowledge when they've made mistakes and be better than that. But when, first of all, when all you've known is that people don't do that, it doesn't really come naturally, especially when you're a man, especially when you're not used to talking about your feelings normally. It's something that kind of takes time to kind of ease into. But then in addition to that, for an Asperger's person, you, you also got to bear in mind that this might be someone who's been told that he's a total weirdo his whole life and is kind of sensitive about it and kind of defensive and that I have other points that kind of relate to that as well here. But by the way, I have permission to do this for this letter because I know this is a little personal, but I got the permission. Uh, he is very, very sensitive himself, has no problem insulting me, can't accept what he has said, done, is upsetting, calls me being silly. Um, sometimes we can be defensive and not realize what it sounds like. Also, Asperger's people have a problem with being blunt, but they don't realize that they're being blunt is kind of the problem. It's something that I've, I've had to kind of learn over time myself, and, I, and I'm 26 now, and I'm still learning that there's some things people don't like to hear certain ways, and you might have to break things down a little bit, there's some things people are more sensitive to than some things, and we just kind of learn that over time. I, I myself have been too blunt at moments, and that's sort of the thing that could have made my upbringing a little bit easier, is, you know, just kind of breaking it down and saying, this is rude because of this, instead of just getting defensive and saying something worse than what I just said, which is what I got a lot of times. What I needed was an explanation, what, what was wrong about what I was saying or doing. You know, and Asperger's people really need guidance. People really need guidance, too. But we don't always know why something should hurt to somebody else. I don't, I don't know all about all other Asperger people, although I have talked to many of them. But I know that for me, I don't really get embarrassed, ever. I just don't. It's something that I just, I don't really have it. Um, and if I ever did for certain things, like public speaking, I kind of snapped out of it somewhere along the way. It just stopped being a problem. But we don't always know how somebody else can feel embarrassed or, or, or be sensitive about something. And sometimes something kind of does seem silly to us, but we, as, as men or as Asperger's people, we got to just understand that something is, is hurtful to somebody else or that they're sensitive to it. And, you know, that's something also that couples counseling can help with too, is just kind of showing the person, whoa, you're hurting this person. It, it doesn't really matter if you think that it's silly. Sometimes it helps to get a second opinion from someone else. Not our friends. Don't get our friends in our personal business. 
we that causes so many problems. And people pick sides and people exaggerate stories and leave out the details as they look bad. Oh my gosh, there's so many problems with that. Couples counseling though, that's that's a real solution for that and get somebody else's perspective on something so one might listen better. But he has double standards and he likes things to be on his terms. I don't think that Asperger's or autistic people intend to be selfish, but it can be difficult to see what something is like for somebody else. And it's something that I've had to work with over time myself. I have to I have to make sure that I consciously in many situations try to put myself in somebody else's shoes to see if that kind of thing is weird. And without doing that, I do all kinds of things that will weird people out growing up and make them uncomfortable because I, I didn't see that it would be taken that way or that that would be uncomfortable because I'm not bothering to put myself in their shoes because I just see things my own way and it might, it might have been weird sometimes but I don't know, I'm better about that now. I've got more people skills now. But yeah, um, it can it can be difficult the double standard thing and I can kind of see that too for myself too. It just I want people to be sensitive to me in some to me in some ways, and maybe I'm not that with other people. There's some things I, I can have sort of a short fuse about, and for the most part, I think I'm patient. Um, there's some things I just get really mad really fast about, but I don't know. For the most part, I'm patient. But I want people to not be a jerk. But in the same way, maybe sometimes I'm a little over blunt, and I, I've I've realized that with things, and I've I've try to be better about that. Um, lately I've been going on videos and stuff and people preaching their religion about gay people and I tell them to d quit talking about your religion. Like, nobody cares and I'm not religious and we're tired of hearing it in every single gay related article or video you could possibly look up. There's people preaching religion to people who do not believe it and do not care. And I don't know, maybe with those people you need to be blunt, I don't know, but I know that's something I've been a little bit blunt about lately. Just, ugh, I'm so sick of hearing from the religious community about gay people and their stuff about it. Um, I don't know. There's always a nicer ways to say things, but sometimes people just need bluntness. But, um, he refuses to apologize, kind of went into that, um, People don't always see how apologizing is necessary to, it might take a person to talk about that. But, intention is to prevent further problems, not hurt him. Yeah, um, that's a really good thing to do, as long as we don't do too much, and as long as they understand that, which I don't, I don't think that it sounds like this person understands this because, because it's hard to change in the first place. <laughs> As a person, and especially having Asperger's, it changing takes time. And I know that 30% of people with Asperger's eventually grow out of it, I believe. It's 30%. And that might be a changing statistic later. It For me, I was able to evolve over time because I really wanted to be a better person. But I, I'm constantly seeing other people that have Asperger's that don't really care about changing, or don't really want to change, aren't really high-functioning don't really see a point in changing because it makes perfect sense to them and that's a little frustrating even for me I just think shouldn't you want to be better than that but you know I give people advice and sometimes they don't want to take it and I know that the advice would help their problem and I just whatever I I do what I can if people want advice but um it's not always possible to change it's not always possible to get better with Asperger's especially if the person doesn't even want to do it so I don't know, that's tricky. But I do understand wanting to prevent further problems in a relationship. But I also know that when I've tried to do that too much, that that ends up pushing the person away too. So, he feels that if he apologizes and makes amends, then it's accepting that he did wrong and really can't bear to have done any more wrong in his life. Um, okay, apologizing by itself doesn't do anything. And that's, that's something else that I, I'm kind of not for the whole parents making a kid apologize thing. You're saying the word, you're not actually intending to change anything, you know, when you're making a kid do that. But if someone, see if I was to have a kid, I would not only maybe make him apologize, but it, make him explain to the other kid why what he did was wrong, and then if he can't, then I'll help him out. You know, they need to understand why it's wrong. You need to ask them why and make them say it, something like that. 
But just apologies by themselves, that doesn't... Maybe he just wants to brush it off, it sounds like. He feels like he apologizes and makes amends, and he's accepting they did wrong. He can't really bear to have done any more wrong in his life. Um, some people don't like to hear that they're wrong or defensive or insecure. I think especially Asperger's people can be very insecure because it's so hard to figure out what's wrong in their head in the first place on their own. Like, a lot of times it just seems like, I don't know. Uh, some Asperger's people maybe are better off alone until they, they do figure out their stuff. I know what a mess my head was between 15 and 17, and there were certain times in my life where the last thing I needed was a relationship because my relationship needed to be with my brain and figuring out what was in my head. I had the craziest mood swings on God's earth. I would start crying and sobbing hysterically for no reason at all just because like I felt emotional, and that's that's just how our brains can be sometimes with AS, you know, at, at least for me, with 15 to 17 is my, my bipolar Asperger, like, climax of Asperger OCDs and every, obsessive cool stuff and everything else. I mean, our, it's not always good for us to be in a relationship at all, especially if they can't really acknowledge that what they're doing is hurtful. But... I've enjoyed being single the times I've been single because I've needed to figure myself out, I know for me. But it comes across as callous selfish behavior. Kind of went into how we can be selfish already. How we don't, we don't necessarily mean to be, but we don't always know that we are. And something I've learned to be better over time is putting myself in the other person's shoes and reminding myself that this is a human that's hurt by my behavior and, you know, it's... It's sometimes really easy to get wrapped up with what's in our head, and the best way to describe that to a neurotypical person is just imagine that you have, like, a thousand thoughts every second, you know, like, things are slamming in your head over and over and over with thoughts. It's like the, I think the words was, the neurotransmitters in your head are, like, too close together, the thought signals. Yeah, and that's another thing, especially when I was 15 to 17 was the worst, and it's just, like, it was too intense how much I was thinking all the time it was making me crazy. But, you know, when you have something like that going on in your head, it's, it's difficult to not be selfish, you know, because you're, you're trying to figure out what's going on, you know? But I don't know how to make a not caring person more caring, though, necessarily. But I do think it's important that we talk about how we feel and not get defensive and try to get them back with something worse. That's the worst thing somebody could do. That just becomes... A huge argument that could have been avoided by just saying how we felt in the first place. It's what I've experienced. It's important to talk about feelings and not say something's going to get them defensive or get defensive from something they said or, whoa, that really hurt, stop right there. You know, so there's, there's better things to say. Once a person with AS has been told not to say or do, they, then they shouldn't repeat it. That's another thing that stood out to me. Um, sometimes I have to be told not to do something 10 or 20 times. I mean, I've had it happen where I've, I've been obsessed with a story that someone's repeatedly told me not to talk about, but it's like stuck in my head and winding around and round and round. And, you know, I, I told Adam before we got together that one of the requirements, I mean, I didn't say it like this or whatever, but we, we're having in like a nice conversation, very flirty, and we walked him through a couple things that I wanted before, you know, we would start dating. It was a fun conversation, but the gist of it was I needed to make sure he was someone that was not going to get mad if he ever had to repeat himself because I was just with someone that would get very, very, very mad if they had to repeat themselves even one time and I wanted to make sure that I wasn't with someone like that again. And I know I need people to repeat themselves with me in, in, in different ways, you know, not always the same way because I don't always get something one way with the literal way that I take it. They might have to say it a second way or a third way sometimes and then I'll think, Oh, that's what they meant in the first place. So, that, that sentence was a little troubling, you know. Once a person with AS has been told not to say or do, then they shouldn't repeat it. Well, it's weird. It's like sometimes we think that by saying it a different way, it's okay. You know, we're, we're, we're still trying to figure out people, too. You know, sometimes we have to have people repeat things to us a little bit more. Anyway, um... I try to get into the little technicalities of apologizing in relationships, apologizing for an Asperger's person, how it can be difficult to see what things feel like for other people. I hope that was helpful to someone. Thank you.